Welcome to a clean tech news wrap up from Ecotricity and we start with new EV models coming to our shores, namely the car that's been on the lips of everyone with eyes and lips, that car is the Zika 7X and I'm going to be at the official launch of this car in Sydney this upcoming Friday so I'll let you know all that I can about the car but in short it's a luxury SUV with a range of more than 600 k's per charge, does 0 to 103.8 seconds on the spicy version and the rapid charging time is, wait for this, 13 minutes, 10 to 80 percent in 13 minutes. So remember all those comments from 20 years ago, people smugly saying, I'm never going to buy one of those electric cars unless they can charge as fast as a petrol car fills and go as far. Well, internet commenters from 2005, your car has arrived. There's no word obviously on the prices just yet and confirmed Kiwi specs, but press the subscribe button because the video of the launch will be coming very, very soon. I'll give you all the info I can. Also, I should add that I've spoken to Zika and the Zika X is coming here for sure. They're just sorting out all the behind the scenes drama needed to bring a car into the Kiwi markets. Reassured though, it's coming soon, so stay tuned. But like getting a parking ticket during a car event, sometimes a little bad news has to follow the good, namely the launch of the Geely Verizon Supervan. Now, the dude that I was speaking to a couple of months ago said that they're not bringing this car in now, and that's a shame because I saw this machine at Everything Electric in Sydney early this year, and it is the most luxurious work van I've ever seen with lots of creature comforts. Plus, it's got built in scales to weigh the load you're hauling, plus, it's got no side pillar, so you can load pallets into it. Plus, it's also got onboard mains power outlets, which would make it the ultimate freedom camper. Now, I've reached out to Geely themselves, and I'm hoping they'll get back to me with some good news. So, hit the subscribe button and watch the space. Also, no word on getting my hands on a Honda EN1. Now, this is a well priced, decent spec electric car from Honda at a really tempting price. It looks quite good on paper, but after three emails to Honda, they still don't seem too keen on letting this potato loving idiot behind the wheel. So I'll plead with them once more, and if that fails, I might just have to go to a dealership with some hidden cameras and take one for a discreet test drive while filming it. What do you think? Would I be torpedoing my career by doing that, or is that worth a shot? In tech news, MG have just announced that the MG4 is going to be the first EV on the market with a semi-solid state battery. The official launch is on August 5, but what we know so far is that its energy density is 180 watt hours per kilogram of battery material. And for comparison, the LFP battery in the MG4 has a density of about 100. 40 watt hours per kilo. So it should offer the same range for less weight, but it retains 13.8% more range and below freezing conditions than the standard LFP battery. No word on price yet, but it should be affordable. The MG brand division general manager said that the price is going to target the BYD Dolphin. And so his exact words were, there's no reason customers wouldn't choose the MG4. All I can say is may the price wars continue. It's a bad time to start investing in petrofuels. Actually, that's not just hyperbole. Last year, China's largest oil refiner, Sinopec, reported that it's witnessing profits slide due to both intensive electric car adoption in China and falling crude prices. In fact, their profits took a 16.8% hit last year. That is not a small dent in their income. The same thing is going to happen here too, sooner or later. So here's a top tip from me. Gavin's crappy life tips. If you have any money invested in the oil industry, my advice to you is sell baby sell. Like today. Don't say I didn't warn you. On the subject of China, some more good news. China's CO2 emissions have just gone into reverse for the first time ever. Like Carbon Brief reports the electricity supply from clean sources has been so strong in China that they have cut their coal power output even as power demand ramps up. China's emissions are down by 1% in the last 12 months, and this is just the beginning. We need to copy their clean tech and their electric vehicle uptake, not just for the carbon savings, but for the financial savings too. And on that very subject, the numbers are in for global EV sales in the first half of the year, 9.1 million. Yep, Romotion reports that this is a 28% increase compared to the same period in 2024. The biggest chunk of these was China, which now makes up more than half of the world's EV sales as they leap into the future, with Europe coming in second place. The USA, however, only managed a 3% increase, so come on America, don't get left behind. Let's talk EV myths now, namely battery life, and we've all seen the stories from the University of Facebook on how you've got to replace those electric car batteries every two years or three years, then it was four years, and last I heard the myth's up to five years now, so honestly every year the number keeps growing to the point where I think the trolls on the internet have had to outfit that myth with wheels in order for it to keep up. But as the great philosopher Freddie Mercury once said when I asked him about battery myths, Another one bites the dust, 
might have made that one up. But a new study from Geotab in the UK says that the average EV battery degrades at 1.8% per year. So that means that after even 20 years, two decades, your car will still have 64% of its range remaining. And that's not bad when you consider most combustion cars don't survive that long. So finally, it's official. The myth is finally dead. So next time you have a glass of whatever's your poison, take a moment, raise your glass to that myth. It's had a long life, but it's with the Lord now. Moving on to events and rewiring Aotearoa is working hard to educate Kiwis on all the benefits of electrifying everything from homes to cars through its nationwide Kill Bills tour. I'll chuck a link in the description under this video so you can see where they're going to be in a town near you. But put simply, they are doing open cinemas in plain English teaching Kiwis how we can slash our power and fuel bills by going electric and installing heat pumps and solar power and insulation and heaps more. The brains behind the event is Mike Casey. He's an absolute legend with a real heart of gold. He wants to see all our communities, big or small, do well, be healthier, happier, and have money left over in our pockets each week now that clean tech is so accessible. The Kill Bills tour will be all over the country for the next few weeks, so check out when they're in your area. Seriously, I want to attend one of these myself, so I might see you there. One last bit of clean tech news I wanted to mention was something I thought was pretty interesting. Tesla's country director for Australia and New Zealand mentioned autonomous driving coming soon down under. Tom Drew said on LinkedIn that Tesla had been working with Kiwi and Aussie authorities to get full self-driving active on our roads, saying that there are no regulatory blockers preventing its release and that they are in the final stages of testing before it goes live. He also shared a video showing a Tesla driving through Sydney by itself, though I should point out that it's likely only going to be available here providing the drivers keeping their hands on the wheel at all times. Now what's funny is that technically self-driving cars are legal in New Zealand, but not because of any new policy, simply because the Land Transport Act was written back when Emotech was learning to drive. So officially, the act just requires that a licensed driver be in control and can take over at any moment. So legally, we could have it rolling out tomorrow, although unsupervised full self-driving, I think, is still likely a long way away. Also, one shower thought I had is that what fully autonomous self-driving cars would mean for New Zealand's massive car parking industry, like a day of parking in central Auckland's like 20, 30 bucks or so. So what would happen if everyone drove their Teslas into the city and then instead of paying for parking, they all sent their cars home by themselves? Now I know this is fantasy, but then fantasy often comes true. Like look at cell phones and heavier than air flight and the internet, for example, they were all ridiculed at one point. Let's talk chargers now and charge and have been pumping out new locations week after week with new rapid chargers being installed in Nelson at New World Supermarket. There's also a new 60 kilowatt charger installed in Inglewood Place in the very heart of Wellington. Not an easy thing to do in such a congested part of the country. And lastly, there is a fresh new charger installed at New World in Walkworth, complementing the 300 kilowatt chargers that Chargenet installed down the road, which I'll be testing myself very soon with a truck, so stay tuned for that. Now, all these chargers combined mean that Chargenet this month has finally reached the milestone of more than 500 rapid chargers nationwide. Plus, a lot of established sites are also being upgraded to multi-use rapid chargers too, so that you can charge several cars at once, which in my opinion is just as newsworthy. So, well done charging. And lastly, it's time to tackle your questions and comments on social media, starting with the recent BYD versus Tesla video in which I put a BYD C-Line 7 up against a newly refreshed Tesla Model Y. And while most comments were fair and you all enjoyed the video for what it is, facts with a bit of fun, some folks did get a little emotional as you know car guys often do. Depending on the segment, I was accused of being either a Tesla shill by some and a BYD shill by others. The truth is though, both cars performed brilliantly to the point where I had to record two outros because I didn't know which one was going to win because they were both so close right up to the end. Though I should point out that while many of you were absolutely grilling me over the glove box segment during that ease of use segment, it wasn't my fault. The magnetic mechanism that holds the dashboard open and closed, it is unresponsive when I tried to open it. So I stand by my comment that sometimes good old fashioned buttons and switches are better than touch screens and voice commands. Next up, in the recent Geely EX5 video, one of my big complaints was that the noise generator in the car makes a god awful noise at low speed like an ice cream truck from hell. But as many of you told me in Australia, this has already been addressed with an over the air software update, which is fantastic news. I cannot wait for it to roll out here. And while many of you did enjoy the humor in that video, Maurizio was not a fan, saying that this video had the biggest smart ass commentary he's ever heard and it was painful, to which I can only apologize. The cheeky, crazy, and silly video style I often employ is not for everyone, I get that. If you're after a much more like subdued video pace with less energy and less joy, there's a couple of Aussie car reviewers I could recommend. 
That's a joke, that's a joke. For those that don't know, Aussies and Kiwis, we rib each other often. No offense intended, it's all in good humor. For those of you that do like a laugh while you learn something, then last week's MG versus MG video really hit the spot. In that video, I put a classic MGB up against the electric MG Cybuster in a series of silly challenges, and your comments were just as entertaining, although there were some good points made. For example, my mispronunciation of Alcantara. I have no idea why my brain suddenly decided to call it Alicantara. I can only apologize. I think it might have been the panic of having to remember or every, everything to say to camera before the inevitably rain, because seriously, we had the car for like a week, but we had one day without rain. It was a bit stressful, so I apologize for the mispronunciation. Be sure to check out my new Pugot electrical car with Alicantara line chassis. Yeah, I'm gonna go wash my mouth out with soap now, but thank you for watching. Hit subscribe. See you in the next video.